I was walking along the greenway in Boston when I saw a man some distance away walking in the opposite direction with a completely floppy right arm. Like everything below the elbow was just boneless and his forearm was flapping around all loose. He was wearing a short sleeve shirt, so I don't think it could have been a prosthetic or some kind of gag. No one else around him was reacting to it. Someone follows up and says, whoa, I saw the same guy. Completely forgot until now. We were driving and took a wrong turn so we were going around the greenway to get back on 93, commenting on what a nice day it was out, and the guy was walking through traffic like a zombie. His clothes were all tattered and he had this vacant stare and his arm was all rubber from below the elbow down just flapping around. We were wondering if he got hit by a car or something. Stick around until the end of this episode to explore more unexplained things that people have seen in broad daylight. Welcome back to Ask Reddit Mondays, where we explore the subreddit Ask Reddit on this episode of Redditainment. Today's topic, what's the creepiest slash most unexplained thing you've seen in broad daylight? Let's jump right into the comments. First comment says, weird intersection near my house that about three months ago started to be torn down for being too dangerous. Replaced by a roundabout. Funny thing is, it was a normal intersection, four directions, two lanes in, two lanes out, with dedicated left turn lanes. Except, just about every week, someone crashed there. Every month we'd hear of a near fatality or worse. Police couldn't figure it out, so they started to petition for them to change it. They changed the light pattern and reduced speeds, which brought the total crashes down. But here's the fucked up thing, serious injuries tripled. It got so bad they posted cops permanently to monitor the intersection. And what they noticed was, if they watched the intersection non-stop, nothing would happen. But the instant you'd take your eyes off of it, someone would speed through a red light or make a left turn on red. They then finally tried one last thing, remove two of the lights in favor of stop signs on one of the roads first day there was a multi-car pileup. second day there was a minivan rollover third day the mayor's daughter hit someone going 50 day four intersection was closed for construction i don't even know what to think about this definitely a cursed intersection if you ask me assuming these statements are all correct that is definitely bizarre and unexplained i'm always of the mindset that no matter how unexplained or crazy something is, there's gotta be some sort of natural explanation to it or some sort of logical explanation at the very least. But imagine if you're on the investigation team on this one and you see it firsthand that, hey, we've been watching this and nothing happens the moment we turn our backs to it. There's just mayhem going on. What is going on here? But let's move on to the next comment. Someone says, I was a kid, about 15, seen some old man, looked about 70. He opened up a sewer grate and just hopped in. Someone follows up and saying, mole people, look it up. If I'm not mistaken, I've actually seen some sort of vice documentary on this at some point, where it talks about these people living in these sewer systems of these big cities. Mostly people that have been rejected from society or mostly dealing with some sort of mental health issues or drug addictions. Maybe it was one of those people that this person saw, who knows. And here's the story that we started this episode with. I was walking along the Greenway in Boston when I saw a man some distance away walking in the opposite direction with a completely floppy right arm. Like everything below the elbow was just boneless and his forearm was just flapping around all loose. He was wearing a short sleeve shirt so I don't think it could have been a prosthetic or some kind of gag. No one else around him was reacting to it. When I read this my first thought was maybe it was an amputated arm? But then going back into the comment, it says he was wearing a short sleeve shirt, so that wouldn't make any sense. So there was definitely an arm there. It was just below the elbow that it was just all rubbery. And the craziest thing is, what are the odds that somebody else saw the same guy and that that somebody else is also on Reddit and happened to see this post and happened to see this comment and also replied to this specific comment? I mean... What are the odds of this happening? That's crazy. Unless this guy just walks around a lot on this highway and has been seen by a ton of people, but still kind of blows my mind. Another comment says, 2008 mountain bike race in the Midwest. It was 100 degrees that day, almost no oxygen on the woods. It was a hot day. 
three of us were well ahead of the pack. We were about to lap another racer when he just rode off the trail and down a steep ravine. All three of us stopped. The ravine was steep and very deep. We found his bike halfway down. We never found the racer. They sent a search party and found nothing. To this day, he's never been found. While this one is truly in the spirit of the post of unexplained. I guess one option would be that a wild animal would have found the racer and that might have been the unfortunate end of that, but then there should still be some sort of evidence as to that tragedy. I would assume. The fact that these three guys saw where this racer went off the track and went missing, it's not like they were randomly searching just anywhere. They actually knew where he was last seen and that they found his bike, but not the person. That's gotta be some sort of a kidnapping or maybe some sort of serial killer that was on the loose at that time. I'm sure something like that will stick with you for a very long time. I mean, if you're part of this race and you witnessed this happen, if it was me personally, I would probably not be able to stop thinking about it and keep asking myself what the heck happened to this person. All right, let's move on to the next story. It says, when I was a little girl, I was playing in my room one morning with my sister. I looked out my window and saw a man staring in at us. I told my sister to leave my room and ran to get my father. He didn't believe me and thought I was crazy. Needless to say, I had an awful hard time sleeping that night. Throughout my childhood, I'd hear what sounded like footsteps outside at night or my parents' car door opening long after they had went to sleep. Several years later, I looked at our house on Google Maps I always assumed we lived by ourselves in the woods, far from anyone else. It turns out there was a small house that looked like it was being lived in only a few hundred yards in the woods from us. My family was skeptical of my crazy stories after I showed them that. I can't imagine if you're a young person living in that house and you know what you saw or you know what you heard and people just don't believe you and you're completely freaked out by it. That's just too bad that the parents wouldn't take this person serious. I don't know. Maybe they just said that in an attempt to calm her down. I mean, at the very least, go and check out that house that was not too far away to see what's going on and who lives there. Or set up security cameras. I mean, if my own child would tell me that, that would worry me a little bit. Here's another one. When I was a teenager, I was at a friend's house when his parents and family were not home. I was on his porch tying my shoes, then I went back into his house tying my shoes, a 20 second action. No, I walked inside and his entire family is back home and they're sitting at the kitchen table eating dinner and they ask me what I'm doing here. They're staring at me like I'm crazy and asking why I just walked into their house. I ask for the time, they tell me it is 6.30 p.m. I lost an entire hour doing a 20 second action. To this day, I still have no clue what happened or where the time went. Okay, what? See, my logical brain right away tries to figure out what the heck happened logically. But something like this? Reading through some of the comments, some people say it might be some sort of seizure that this person may have had, that they just kind of lost track of time and didn't realize that that's what happened to them. So they would just kind of snap out of it. And apparently this happens to some people. But if you're not aware that that's what's happening to you, that definitely makes for an unexplained event. Another one says, not me, but my dad. He was outside at the far end of the yard and saw me standing on the stairs, whistling for him to come back to the house. When he got back inside, he asked what was up and why I changed my shirt. I hadn't been outside, didn't hear any whistling, and was wearing the same black shirt I'd been wearing all day. Not the white shirt he saw me wearing when he saw me outside a few minutes earlier. All right, I give up. I'm not even gonna attempt to decipher what's going on in these stories. They're just way too bizarre. Nonetheless, very interesting. Needless to say, this thread is filled with stories from different people of unexplained events. So I'll leave a link in the description down below if you wanna check out some more. But let's wrap up this episode with one more story and it goes as follows. It was 1984. I was 15 years old and was alone at my older sister's house. It was late morning. I had just got out of the shower, still wrapped in a towel when I heard a noise outside. I looked out a window and watched a complete stranger tying the doorknob of the main entrance to the railing of the deck with a rope I used to walk the dog with. He then leaned a mop that was on the deck against the door. 
I called my sister, told her what happened, got dressed, got the heck out of the house through a different door, and hid in the bushes until police arrived. The house was somewhat remote with no close neighbors. Found out later that the door he had tied up was unlocked. No clue how long he had been lurking around before I knew of his presence. To this day, we have no idea who that was and what his motives were. Beyond creepy, definitely unexplained. As I'm reading, I'm trying to understand what was going on. So a stranger was tying the doorknob of the main entrance to the railing of the deck with a rope I used to walk the dog with. So basically a dog leash tying the doorknob of the main entrance to the railing of the deck. Why? What kind of purpose could that possibly serve? Well, but there you have it, folks. A lot of unresolved stories that, that leave me with a feeling that I'm not sure of. But I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you want to read more of these creepy unexplained stories, again, there's a link in the description down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.